and we're back. So this video, we're gonna do some handle fit up and we're probably gonna get it glued on, some hand sanding done, and then we'll get into the handle shaping. So thanks again for joining me. The handle material that we're gonna use is some of this uh, curly maple. I'm choosing this because it should match the twist pattern in this. Somewhat okay, I guess. It won't be perfect, obviously. But I think I'm gonna try to angle it so that the, it, the lines match a little better with the twist. Anyway, so we're gonna use that. And then I've got a piece of black G10 and then a piece of brass and then a piece of black G10 and those are gonna be the spacers and the handle material go on here. So first thing we need to do is take care of this tang. It needs to be cleaned up just a little bit. It's pretty close to where it needs to be, but it's a little off center. Something moved in the, in the quench, but that'll be easy to do. Once we do that, we'll get going on drilling the holes and fitting everything up for this handle. So we got this nice and straight now and I just uh, I just used a old worn out 36 grip belt cleaned it up tapered it and then uh, chamfered the edges just a little bit to get rid of all the hard corners so one of my favorite things about integrals is that when you're fitting up the handle material you don't have to be exact because the front of it isn't gonna show like it would on a hidden tang without an integral. So the bolster is already there and you can just be somewhat messy about your material fitting up against it. So all I did was I measured from corner to corner and it's like 0.44 inches. So I'm just gonna take a half inch, drill out my material and then it'll fit perfectly around that. And then all I did here was I stacked my material on here and then just screwed it down on this board so that way I don't have to worry about it spinning and cutting the crap out of my fingers. like that all right now we're over here in the dark corner of the shop so because I want to make these curls angle a little bit more so they kind of match the the twist of the blade which I'm guessing so hopefully it'll work out I want to cut off this at an angle so instead of going onto the blade like that, it's going to go onto the blade like that, and then the curls are going to go more forward. So all I did was I drew a line from end to end to give it an angle, and then drew a 90 degree right here, and then I put it on my miter and turned the miter until it's going to match that line. Now I'm just going to cut it off with the bandsaw so I have a nice straight line. And I'm gonna go slow, so hopefully I don't have to do much sanding.
just like that, we have a nice straight angle. Now that I've got my angle cut on here, I need to drill a hole in here. So I'm gonna put this on here and kind of decide where about that's gonna sit and put a mark where the center of the tang is. And then I'm gonna take my little T here and put it up against the bolster and adjust the end of this to as deep as I need to drill. So I'm gonna go a little past. So we're about three inches on there. And then I'm gonna transfer that line onto here from that center mark. So that's gonna be the angle straight up and down that I need to make my hole. So I'm also gonna transfer this line across the top. And then put a mark at center on here so I can drill my hole in the middle. And then I'll just take and put a place to start that. Place for the drill to grab a hold. All right, and then I just need to put this in my vise at an angle and then drill that. So I'm going with a quarter inch bit on this one because that's the thickness of my tang. And then the width of it's a little bit wider, but I'll just dig that out with a brooch as soon as I'm done. So I've got this put in a little vise right here. And now all I'm gonna do is throw my angle on here and then get this straight with the angle or somewhat close, which is gonna be about right there. Another thing you can do is you can just take and push this back a little bit drop that down and make sure that you're in line with the bit, which we're pretty close. I left enough length on the drill bit that when I get up to the chuck, that's gonna be the depth I want. So everything's lined up, I know where to stop. And start drilling. I'm just using a brad point drill bit on this. You don't have to, it's just what I use when I'm working with the, the wood. That's that. Over to the vise. So, as you can see, this doesn't fit in there. So we just need to dig this out a little bit. So I'm just gonna put this in the vise at the same angle that I drilled the hole just to make things a little easier. And then just start digging. If you guys need a brooch, this one actually made this and it works really well. I could change out this blade for a more narrow one so I get all the way in, but I just don't want to. But the one that I made, you can actually swap out blades for different sizes and lengths and all that. So I'll leave a link to this up, uh, up here somewhere or there or wherever that is. So I know for all the forged and fire watchers that the judges are always, oh, we don't like the burn throughs, blah, 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 whatever. 
Um, I think if you're if you were to heat this up and stick it in the material and leave it there, you'd have some major issues. But if you just heat this up and do quick little jabs into the wood, there's, you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever. And then it basically makes a really solid pocket because it's shaping basically exactly, you know, the, the shape of the tang. So I'm not quite sure what their what their problem is. Get that a little warmer. But as you can see, I mean I'm not I'm not damaging anything. I might char the material just a little bit, but I can scrape that right out with the brooch and won't have any issues whatsoever. Plus this tang needed to soften it up anyway. So it's a win-win. And that should be perfect right there. See, not too much heat in there to really char anything to make it weak. It just burns out a little bit at a time. And you're good to go. I do the integral a little bit different than I do the non-integral hidden tang. So with a non-integral, I would actually finish up the blade almost completely, hand sand, etch, all that stuff. And then I would shape the handle separately and then glue it on. That would be the last thing I, I do. But with the integral, I'm going to glue everything up first and then I'm going to shape the handle afterward. And then what I've done on the tang here is I've actually ground a, a few little grooves in here because I think it, in my mind anyway, it helps the epoxy not only adhere because it's really rough, but I think it creates, you know, areas that you couldn't pull this out if you wanted to because the epoxy would be creating a sort of gate, I guess, that it would have to get by. So, mix up a little epoxy. And it's cold out here, so I'm going to have to, after I get this glued up, I'm going to have to take it inside. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little black in here and if you're wondering where to get this pigment I would probably would never get the powdered pigment again I would just get some alumalite pigment that stuff works really well and it's a liquid so there aren't any lumps and crap in it So I'm gonna dump some in the block first so that it can settle while I'm doing the other stuff.
And then on the spacers, I rough these up with uh, 80 grit, I think. 60 grit, something, anyway. I roughed them up so that the uh, epoxy has something to adhere to. And make sure to coat all the surfaces. Just to ensure that you're getting epoxy into all the cracks and grooves and okay set those there for a second and I'm gonna get a rag to grab this with so I don't get epoxy all over it and then I also cleaned up the shoulders here so that the epoxy will adhere to that and not the the oil that was used during the quench and remember to coat the tang as well and Slide your spacers on here. And then I'm going to grab the block again, shove some more of this in here. And then you just want to make sure that you've gotten the epoxy in all the grooves inside of here, too. Just, uh, Rub this stuff onto all the sides and then coat the top. And then I'm going to take and pour more of this in here. Because when you're doing this and you insert the knife into here, if you don't see epoxy push out, then you probably don't have enough epoxy in here. So always make sure that you have enough in here that when you put the tang inside of there, you see the epoxy push out. If you're going to use it for something else, like the rest of this epoxy, just put it over the container when you're pushing it in there. Make sure there's no air in there. Okay. Now we just need to make sure you have the knife oriented the correct direction and slide it in there. And as you can see, we're pushing epoxy out of there. So we should be good to go. And the last thing you need to do is if, is if uh, let me take this glove off, if your blade swivels in here, like this does. Just make sure that you're turned so it's squared up. And then this is the clamp that I use. So if you see up here, I've actually cut a groove out of the top of this. So what that'll do is it'll fit around the blade like that. And then I can get over the bolster and then clamp it down here and it'll hold that right in there and then again just check to make sure you're where you need to be everything's all set and then uh, just let it cure up